Welcome to New Realities. I'm Alan Steinfeld. I'm very happy to be back on the program with Francine Vail. We've been talking about this evolutionary change we're in and how we are receiving more of a higher vibration from other dimensions. Francine has had mystical visions for a long time, your whole life. And let's talk about what is evolving here. I mean, the collective and individuals, but how do you see this change taking place on planet Earth? The way I see it is that we are receiving tremendous assistance because it's the end of a cycle. How does things change for you personally, but also on the planet? What do you notice about people and their openness to like ETs and other dimensions since then? Well, there's, there's definitely a, a greater openness to the idea of life on other planets and in the universe and other universes with life out there. But I think that it, part of it is that everything that happens on this planet happens according to a design, a, a design that's far greater than we can see. If we look back, we can see part of that design, but we cannot see it in its entirety because it is designed by infinite intelligence. And so, so it's part of the timing. It couldn't happen before. We could not evolve to where we are going now because the veil has now been uh, uh, thinner. The, the veil has grown thinner and gates have opened. You could say cosmic gates have opened, which allows cosmic beings to come down and influence us. We are being inspired and influenced by these cosmic beings of light mm -hmm. who I see and who are around us even when you don't see them. Isn't it interesting your name is Veil? Because <laughs> you're lifting the veil. You're part yeah. of the consciousness that's yeah. lifting the veil. But the other thing that you said I think is very interesting is that these beings are meeting us because we're resolving our ego-based structured reality. There's no room for these other beings or, or in our awareness if we're caught up with this person likes me, that person doesn't, right. who's playing football, what do my right. shoes look like, you know. Right. Right. So as we transcend that, I'm not saying don't buy new clothes, but, you know, I'm saying, you know, we're transcending materiality so we can meet these beings. Yes, we are. And so it's, it's, it's a combination of both. They are here for us, but they cannot materialize in third dimension because it's too dangerous. They cannot do it. So in order to meet them, we have to raise our vibration. But it's arranged so that we can when it was arranged so that we couldn't, only very few people were able to get into that place and, and bring down these amazing inventions and discoveries. Right. But aside from that, the average person was just working hard. And so now we have, because of the time, it's like the great cosmic clock mm -hmm. is now allowing this time to unfold. And so we are the beneficiaries, but we have also lived in the past. Right. And so we have evolved. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Here we are. You know, Get here, ready. Here we are. <laughs> we are the ones we've been waiting for. We have evolved to this time so we could be ready for this time and be ready to greet and welcome these cosmic beings. And they are definitely having an influence on the culture, on the society, on the individuals, on, on everything. And that's why we are in so much chaos. Because the darker side, and there is, you know, we live in a duality and there is a darker side, doesn't want to sacrifice their controlling issues. Mm -hmm. And so they're holding on tight to control us, but we're moving up. And so we're, we're, we're trying to breach that, that wall of, of, of control. Right. And Time become to free. And that's what the cosmos wants us to do. Yes, we have to take down that wall. <laughs> right. That's why we are so against new the walls building. being built because we are actually breaching walls. But the other thing that you said that um, uh, stimulates something in me is that we have to shift our consciousness if we're going to meet the cosmic intelligence. If you're just a very limited, narrow person, not that there's anything wrong with it, 
If you're just walking around like this, there's no room in our mind to reach out beyond ourselves. So that's why I find it a hard thing to tell other people, well, you know, there are cosmic beings here. You can't talk to them. Is there any way you found that to bridge that gap? Where well, it, I, I've been told that I was born very early in this movement and that I was born to be like a way shower in this movement. Now, a lot of it is not about talking. A lot of it is about being. So if you emulate that way of being... Like you, how? How will you em emulate uh, it? By being... By, how do you emulate that way of being? That cosmic way of by being. By being trustworthy, honest, responsible, kind, helpful, those those things. When you're adding to the life around you in a positive way, when you're contributing to the life force of other people so that they can open up, that you are being that without saying a word. So like, uh, as an example, um, if you're a parent, um, you don't always have to say to your child, now you do it this way. If you do it that way, your children will see that you're doing it that way mm -hmm. and they will do it that way because that's what they are learning from watching you. So it goes beyond the family. It goes as you go out into the world, you affect more people. So if someone tries to have an argument with you and you refuse to argue and you just say, well, you know, I'm really sorry you feel that way, I, I don't I don't feel That's that way. That's good advice. I you should try now, that. <laughs> now you're showing the person that you do not wish to engage in an argument, and when they walk away, they can say, "Gee, I almost got into a really bad argument. What was it that happened that I didn't? Or maybe?" And they start to think about it. Well, maybe mm. she didn't want to. You know what? Someone showed me another tool, another like spiritual tool. This woman who was on my show, Hope Fitzgerald, she talked about the infinity wave, and she says if you're arguing or in disagreement, send a wave, like a figure eight energy wave from your heart to their heart. Mm -hmm. And that shifts it. You yes, know, it that's... absolutely does. So if you are with someone and they are agitated or um, uh, angry or directing it at you, what I generally do is I just, I just stop listening and send that love to them. And if I'm in the right physical position, I put my hand on their back. Mm. Like I want to soothe and them. And what does that do? And when I put my hand on their back, I'm transmitting calming energy to them. Mm. And sometimes I'll put my hands on their shoulders very, very gently. And that will very often calm a person down. Now, sometimes you're with someone who you're not close enough to to do that with. So you just have to send them the energy. Energetically, put your arms around them. Um, really feel it. You know, again, this is stuff that you have to feel from your heart. So in a way, by being that, we don't even have to say it. And we say it when the person is open to it. You no, know, but part of this new time is that you bring up a good point. We are energetic beings and we are uh, feeling the energy more. We're Yes. And this is moving into an ascension, what's been called the ascension. We've been talking about that for uh you know, 30 years, we're moving into an ascension wave, but I think we are. Whether everyone will disappear, and I mean, some people have become non-physical, vibrate their body out here, which I think is our destiny and change into light. I think that's a powerful thing, but it's not the ultimate. The ultimate is to do what you're saying, be kind, be genuine, be, be a loving being. And ascension happens as a result of that. Yes, yes. Other, other people said, no, everyone wants to ascend because to, just to get out of here. And you're not going anywhere no. if you just want to get out of here. We have to be here and love this dimension. Yes. We have to manifest it here. We have to bring heaven to earth. It's not about us getting out of here and going back to heaven. It's about bringing heaven to earth. There's something very mystical about that that has to do with the oneness of humanity and the planet. Well, talk about how do we bring heaven to earth? How would you by, suggest? By being that person that we can think of as uh, the best that any human being can be. So if we're not brilliant, we can't be brilliant, but we can act 
in ways that are incredibly um, supportive, kind, loving, mm -hmm. and trustworthy. And you know, it's a funny thing. When you act that way and you behave that way, you actually raise your intellectual level. And your vibrational level. And your, but, but, your, because your vibrational level is raising, your intellectual level is also but raising. But you get triggered. I mean, not to tell me, but I've seen you get a little triggered sometime. What I do you get do? upset. Yeah. But I that's... remind myself that it's not me, that that's not the essential me, and that the thing that's upsetting me is something that belongs to someone else, and I'm allowing it to affect me, or it's just something that's still hanging on to me from, from the past that I have to really let go of. So how so do we do that? I sit down and I tell myself, shift the energy, shift the energy, you know, and I would just remind myself. And then I take a few deep breaths mm -hmm. and I'll drink some cold water or eat something chocolate or something like that and just, just shift the energy and, and get out of it. But we do have to take practical steps in our lives. So if something is happening and I want it to happen a different way, if it's my thing, I can take part in changing the way it's happening. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's, and if I see something looming, I can give them a loving warning mm -hmm. without interfering. We can't really always interfere, but when we see something, like it is considered high um, integrity. If you see someone headed for disaster, to tell them. To tell them. Yeah. Not to say, well, they'll learn for themselves. If you know it and you see it, you're obligated to tell that person. But the, they have to draw a line with interfering. You know, sometimes you want to stop people and they don't want that. and you, you, So we can't interfere either. But there are ways of doing it. So say you see two people forming a partnership and say one person you know is really not going to be good for them mm -hmm. because of your own experience, not because of gossip or anything. So, you so then you go to the person and you say, I think you need to be very cautious. I've had my own experience. I'm not saying you're going to have that experience. But from my experience, you need to be very cautious with this person in your partnership. But then they are up to them to make and their then, own choice. Then you know? they are up to, it's up to them. They probably will come back and say, what were you talking about? Tell me more. Or they'll come back and say, you know what? You were right. Right. You know? Sometimes they'll say you're right. So and and we all do that. We all take in the advice and then do what we want anyway. Mm. We all do that. But and sometimes we listen. So that's part of... It's part of being here on Earth, and it's not perfect. No, but, but I think it's okay what you said is to, yes, not intervene, but, you know, t share your experience and let people decide for themselves. Right. The other thing I want to get back to is the ET stuff. When I so first met you, I first saw you, you were speaking, uh, you were asking John Mack a question, the brilliant John Mack, who was a UFO. Oh, I was making um, a statement. Yes, and he didn't quite get those higher levels. You were talking about, I think, the higher levels. Was that at the American Academy of Science? Yes, yes. Oh, okay, so yes. So I was going to this this uh, UFO talk with John, Dr. John Mack, psychiatrist at uh, Harvard. 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 And um, the night before, this was a long time ago, 20 years ago, yeah. the night before, I'm in the tub taking my bath, a nice long soak, and my spirit guide spoke to me. And said, this is the message for you to bring tomorrow. You to will br to you will, John Mack. You will bring this message. And what was that message again? And that message was, and, and I was very shy back then. It was really hard for me to get up and speak in front of more than three people. And I was waiting and waiting. I'm thinking, any second, any second. I remember gonna... where you were standing. You were standing on the right side of the right. auditorium there. Right. And you said what? And I said, it is time to bury all weapons of war in the ashes of the past. That was from your spirit guides. Yes. And we are facing a new millennium. And we want to go into this new millennium in a, in a world of peace. Guess that didn't quite happen. But, didn't happen. But that was yeah. how many people actually heed the advice. That's the question that we but always But maybe have. it did help. Because things, of course, could be worse, you know, things can... Well, here's yeah. the people that resonate with that yes. statement will build on it. Then they'll, they will automatically find themselves in a place where they're hearing something like it, and it will, it will spark some kind of uh, inspiration in them. So you're speaking to the ones that are listening. Mm -hmm. The ones that are not listening 
will listen eventually, but they're just not listening now. Well, and it's all up to all of us to put out that message of kindness and purity and, and hopefulness because we still uplift the planet that way. You know, it was really cool of you to ask me that question because it was a long time ago, but yeah, was, I, that is embedded in me. It was 1995. It is embedded in me. But mm. the way, and they told me that the bath, at that time I was learning that water was a living crystal mm. and that I should soak in the water. And before I get into the water, I should put my hands over the water in the tub and infuse the, the water with healing energy and then get into the tub. Mm. And that I was having trouble with my back. Mm. And so that that's what I did. And yeah. while I was in that living crystal water, having my back healed, I received that message. So it was embedded in my memory because a lot of things but, I can't remember. But Francine so. is talking about how we can live as a higher dimensional being because when you go in water, that water becomes you. So if, if we bless that water, if we we are more integrated, and that bath could be more healing. So you're yes. really living as a fifth-dimensional being on some level. I am, in, on many levels, living as a fifth-dimensional being, but I, what brings me back to third dimension... What does? Aside from taking a shower, getting dressed, and putting on all the girl things that we do, uh, what brings me back is people. People and their stories. So as a healer, of course... I'm brought back, I'm here for the people that are here, mm -hmm. and then I'm going up to, to the higher places to heal them. But if somebody upsets me, oh, well. then I'm immediately but why put some, back down into a lower... But not to get too personal, why does something upset you? Because is there still, like, things to work through? I mean, why would you get upset? Well, because you're pretty evolved, I think. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm also pretty nice. And you're, so but you're I don't human. have any feelings of doing anything to hurt anybody or but, get even. That's a big thing. Like, I have no desire, like, to, to seek revenge or, what or get would upset even you? with people. Um, if someone accuses me of something I didn't do, that upsets me. But wait, I mean, I'm that, not saying that I don't like. But... Okay, I mean, that's that, still, that but that still me. has, but there's still that that still makes your bring out the human side. I'm not, I would upset me too, but I think eventually, hopefully, we can evolve beyond that. If I someone does something that I didn't do, then it is upsetting. But I hopefully will transcend that. I'm still working well, that myself. Yes, yes, that <laughs> happened the other day, so I did transcend it, but um, I transcended it very quickly. Uh, the other thing that'll bring me really fast down to earth is betrayal. Mm. I think betrayal is one of the worst and lowest things that one person can do to but another. But it's not your problem. I mean, well, so then I say to myself, that's that person. Yes. It's not me. But I engage with that person because mm. if I didn't engage with them, they couldn't possibly betray but me. But could it be that, not to get really personal, but it could be that some betrayal is still in your karmic past, like from past lives, from because I've read your biography, there's some of that in your biography, Song of the Heart, and it's, maybe it's, there's still stuff to I don't, I was work born to. with no no negative karma on my on my uh, horoscope you know, chart. No, you're pretty pure. I see no, that part. No, no negative karma. But the other people, see, everything, this is a very big topic. Uh -huh. What is truth? Okay. okay. I believe there is a higher truth that overrides everything, and everything else is our perceptions. When people say we each have our own truth, we each have our own perception. So the person that I have forgiven, mm -hmm. that I do not wish to seek retribution or, or revenge, that person, their, their perception is that they still have something that they want to take from me right. and to satisfy their perception of what it is. So, But it in, doesn't have to affect you, though. It does affect me. I do get well, upset. That's honest. I get upset because I feel really bad for that person having that perception mm -hmm. because it's hurting them. Something is hurting that person that doesn't have to hurt that person. But it's their choice to hurt their person. And this is what goes on in all relationships. Mm. People are getting hurt from their perception when it's not necessary. So, but it also hurts you a little bit, I feel. I get hurt. Yes, yeah. I feel other people's stuff. So if I care about somebody or if I'm just friends with somebody or even a stranger, I will feel really bad when I see that their perception is so unnecessary. So what do we do on a higher level to shift that? 
I send them love. And I tell them that they are loved and that I love them and that other people love them and that there's no reason for them to feel this way. But until they're ready to feel it themselves and actually get it themselves, it, 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 I'm just one pebble on their path. And they will have to go on and learn it mm. in a more dramatic way. Learning it for me is a very gentle way. And sometimes people... If you're too gentle, they think it's not a real lesson. They have mm -hmm. to really get battered in order to learn the lesson. So, mm -hmm. so what about your higher self or these higher beings? How do they deal with this kind of thing? Like let's the, the higher, more evolved ETs, what would they do as far they as... They help me immediately. But I have to do it. I have to take part in, in that help. So I will stand in front of my crystals. You've seen my crystals. Mm -hmm. I'll stand in front of them and say... You know, dear guides, help me. You know, this, I need I need your help. Or you could talk to God. You can talk to Jesus. You could talk mm -hmm. to anybody you want. Ask for the help, mm -hmm. and you have. That's part of learning mindfulness. Mm -hmm. When you learn mindfulness, it's easy in those moments to be present and mm -hmm. to know and recognize what's happening here. Well, if, yeah. So if you're not mindful and you're not present, you get lost in the drama of the other person. But how come they don't get lost, the higher selves, the ETs? What, what state of consciousness They're are they? They're not in a human body. So is there a way of being in the human body and not getting sucked in? I guess that's my question. Um, I think it's why you, all, you hear about in ancient times, like... Um, the old lady or the old man would go off and live by themselves in the forest because they had reached that point where they could no longer deal with society. They were mystic, they were some kind of a shaman, and they would go off and live. They could no longer tolerate the society, so you had because to go to them. Because it's a lower energy field, the collective right, group right. consciousness. But my destiny, and I know what it is because I've been shown and told many times, is to be right here in New York City, in a teeming city with millions of people of different ancestries and psychologies and ways of being and be a light in this city. And so this is what my destiny is, not to go off and say, I've had enough, I can't take it, and I'm going to buy a place in the country and let them all kill themselves. That, that's, not, <laughs> that's not what I'm here for. Good, I'm glad, I'm I'm glad you're here. I'm to be here. That's mm -hmm. what I'm here for. And also learn your own lessons is what you're saying. And, yes, and along you, the way, learn yeah. my lessons, which I, I keep thinking and I say to my circle, I said, I think that's enough. <laughs> I learned, there's, not, there's nothing left for me to learn, is there? But there's always more to learn because the creative mind is always bringing you to a new adventure. And mm -hmm. in that new adventure, you're going to have things that you will learn mm -hmm. and that will uplift your consciousness and different interactions with different people mm -hmm. to make that new creative thing come through. And so we're always learning. And God forbid I should ever reach a day that there was nothing more creative in me. I want that to be forever because that's mm -hmm. even doing this is a creative action yeah. through which I learn more mm -hmm. and other people learn with me. So this is what we all are. Whatever, whatever profession a person is in, whether they are a sanitation person or a scientist, mm -hmm. there are new ways of, of interacting with your work. Thank you, Francine. That's good. Do we have just a few comments? Anybody in the audience? We're here in front of a studio audience. Okay, Linda has a little question. And well, we're talking about <clears throat> the greater consciousness. And I wanted to bring something up that uh, it's been, I found fascinating about the environment. Um, in my photography, I went to healing water sites that had not yet had been polluted. And I photographed the pictures, and I put them on the wall <clears throat> with other pictures of water places. And the pictures that were from these efficacious water spaces made people f just fall in love with them and want to be around mm. them and want so to own them and mm. wanted to feel the frequencies as though mm. they could be somehow trans. Onto paper. So, so, so your question, do you have a question or just a statement no, like that? I have, it's an observation as to the level of consciousness that's growing that people can recognize that. They can recognize they the water. You don't have to go to Lourdes or go mm -hmm. somewhere 
to get into the bathtub, they can just absorb, or like Francine said, they can hold their eyes for it and be transported. And I think um, that's another area of tremendous change in the world is how much we all are seeing. We're creating a billion pictures a month, mm -hmm. and we're all seeing ourselves, seeing the world in such an extraordinary way. It's differently. And I think that mm -hmm. this is, um, is a place where uh, the training and the gifts that you both have will have tremendous force mm -hmm. through the media. Okay, thank you. So thank you. just to answer this idea that we're moving into a new society and how will these beings of the higher vision interact with us? They interact with us through our consciousness. So we need to be at rest, we need to be aware and open, and they will interact with us. And sometimes they interact with us by showing us, they can actually make things happen in the physical to show us a sign that we will get. And so we need to be aware, it always takes a different form, but we need to really be aware and conscious of it because it is happening. It's just that if you don't if you don't notice it, you don't know it's happening. So synchronicity is one mm, way. That's and, true. And the increase of synchronicity in our lives is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Mm. The, the amount of synchronicities that happen in one day, if you're paying attention, is 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 enough to make you realize that something is happening mm -hmm. to support you and where you are. That's a good clue for people watching to understand we're already functioning at a higher dimension. If you have a lot of synchronicities, if things just things seem to show up, you're opening a book and there's something you're looking a for. Word. Sometimes a word. it's a word. Yes. It's, it's like today, this morning, I was writing something and I was writing the words, move forward. And just at that moment, I decided to look at my phone, and I clicked on my phone, and it was um, a, a, an online uh, publication called Forward. And I said, that's the word for today, is forward. And because that's the word what we're forward doing. showed up exactly when I was writing and it. And we're moving forward right here. Right. Thank and here you. we are, moving forward. And I see you moving forward. I see a big evolution in you that I haven't seen before. I'm, well, you know, uh, thank you. A lot of it is we are returning to our true authentic mm -hmm. selves. So we start out, you know, babies, when a baby is born, mm -hmm. there, there's so much love coming into the world with that baby. And so that baby is pure. And then we start going through life and we get and we take on the ego and all the shadows and all the other stuff. Now we're getting rid of it. We're mm -hmm. able to return to our true authentic self. Okay. We have to wrap and up. Uh, thank you for watching. This is New Realities. We've been talking to Francine Vail, <laughs> FrancineVail.com. Thank you. Alan Steinfeld, New Realities. Thanks for watching.